Our first question is from a brother who says, can we pray funeral prayer of a person who used to not pray during his lifetime? This is a frequently asked question. And this is an important question because it helps me show you the process, uh, uh, the thinking process of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Now we have a hadith that clearly states that a person who does not pray is a kafir. Between man and shirk or kufr is abandoning salat. The pledge that is between us Muslims and them is prayer. Whoever abandons it, he's a kafir. Now, these hadiths and many more evidences state that a person who does not pray is a kafir. To Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, this is known as Al Kufr or Hukum bil Kufri al Al Umum. It's a general terminology. Now, the people of deviancy, like Al Khawarij, they would say, ah, okay, who doesn't pray is a kafir. Ali doesn't pray, my cousin, so one plus one equals two, he's a kafir. And this is wrong. Because when the Prophet says, may Allah curse those who deal in riba, I don't go to the bank and say to people working in riba and loans and say, may Allah curse you, may Allah curse you, may Allah curse you. This is not what the Prophet said. He said it in a general term, but to have it specifically implemented on an individual, no, this is a different story. We have to ensure that the conditions are fulfilled and make sure that the obstacles are removed before confirming that this person is a kafir. And this is why this is known as theoretical takfir, which is a piece of information and knowledge but to implement it, you need to have the practical takfir. And therefore, when a person dies, now we know that he did not pray. How did you know that? I had never seen him pray in a masjid. He could have prayed home. His wife said that he didn't pray. Maybe he prayed when she went to the bathroom or to the toilet or to uh, um, the kitchen. So. You cannot judge a person as easy as that and get him out of the fold of Islam. If he was not tried and convicted, if, he, if a panel of judges did not speak to him and address him that what he's doing is a major sin and it takes him out of the fold of Islam and he was defiant and insisted not to pray, if this did not happen and he died, then the default is that he's a Muslim, which means that he can be inherited, which means that he can be prayed upon funeral prayer and we can ask Allah for forgiveness for him. This is the practical way of doing it. Whether he's kafir or not, this is in Allah's hands. Unless it was proven in a court of law that he was labeled as a kafir, he is considered to be a Muslim and Allah knows best.